Uh, first of all, Carlach, I want to say that I will be speaking on this matter for Minister Catherine Byrne, who asked me to pass on her regrets as she is unable to, to be here today. On her behalf, I want to thank you for this opportunity to discuss the report of the Joint Committee on Children and Youth Affairs on tackling childhood obesity and the important work that is going on in the Department of Health on this important topic under the aegis of the National Obesity Policy and Action Plan launched in late 2016. The Joint Committee's report emphasised the scale of this issue in Ireland at the very outset of its comprehensive and in-depth report. The Growing Up in Ireland study is cited when the committee's report stated that the proportion of children at different ages who are, who are overweight or obese. The annual Healthy Ireland survey 2017 showed that 30 per cent of young people aged between 15 to 24 are overweight or obese. Being a healthy weight is no longer the norm. The Childhood Obesity Surveillance Initiative COSI, is conducted by the National Nutrition Surveillance Centre in UCD on behalf of the Department of Health and the HSE. Their last report draws on data from more than 17,000 examinations of primary school children in Ireland between 2008 and 2015. Among the key trends emerging is that level, levels of overweight and obesity in children in first class in Ireland as for children aged eight years, appears to be stabilising. However, it is also evident that this stabilisation is not observed in children attending desk schools, and there is also a marked difference between girls and boys, with more young girls tending to be overweight and obese. So while any positive direction in the trends is very welcome, there is certainly no room for complacency. The next report from the Childhood Obesity Surveillance Initiative is an anticipated later this year. The Joint Committee clearly acknowledged that this is their detailed report when it concluded that on the basis of the statistics and the various materials and submissions it received during its extensive hearings, the topic of childhood obesity warranted in-depth scrutiny of the issues associated with it. With the publication of the Joint Committee's report, the Department of Health will be submitting it to the National Obesity Policy Implementation Oversight Group for its consideration. The National Oversight Group was established under the chair of the Department of Health. It compri comprised of representatives from the Department of Agriculture, Food and Marine, the Department of Children and Youth Affairs, the Department of Climate Affairs and Social Protection, Department of Education and Skills, the Department of Housing, Planning and Local Government, University College Cork, the Food Safety Authority in Ireland, the Health Service Executive, including the National Clinic in Lead for Obesity and, and Safe Food. This oversight group, from a diverse range of government departments and agencies, represents the whole of government approach to tackling obesity encapsulated in the National Obesity Policy and Action Plan. It is also joined up thinking on how we respond to obesity and its underlying causes. I say this in the context of fully acknowledging and allaying the, the concerns reported on this aspect of dealing with obesity in the Joint Committee's report. The Oversight Group has been meeting since 2000, October 2017 for the purpose of providing oversight to the implementation of the National Obesity Policy and Action Plan. In, in, in submitting it to the Oversight Group and prioritise it on the agenda for its forthcoming meeting, the Joint Committee's report will then be considered for the explicit purposes of, among others, aligning both sets of recommendations. The consequences of child obesity are significant, Akarlak. Being overweight or, or, or obese carries with it an increased risk of several chronic diseases, including heart disease, type 2 diabetes and certain cancers. In addition to the physical health implications, there is also a significant reduction in the quality of life's reduced opportunity to contribute to society and reach their own potential, as well as mental health implications for some people. For children, obesity carries a stigma which, will, will, which may be linked with bullying. We also cannot ignore the financial dimension to this challenge. In 2015, it was estimated that the total lifetime cost of childhood overweight and obesity in Ireland was 4.6 billion euro. 4.6 billion euro. This is the landscape of obesity that we must deal with, 
and what our obesity policy seeks to address. We know the, that obesity is a complex problem with nutrition, activity-related, psychological, biological and social determinants. Consequently, any realistic solution must be multifaceted and be implemented as part of a suite of measures. The policy acknowledges the importance of an integrated approach across government to tackle the social determinants of health and well-being, and in particular those who contribute to health inequalities in the actual population. It is informed by the Healthy Ireland principle to ensure that it is life course oriented, with a focus on children and families and prevention focused, with an emphasis on targeted inequalities. The policy contains concrete indicators to measure the success of its implementation. It set a short-term target of 0.5% per annum for a sustained downward trend in levels of excess weight in children and a reduction in the gap in obesity levels between the highest and lowest socioeconomic groups by 10%. The development of our obesity policy involved a consultation with children and young people, which was facilitated by the Citizen Participation Unit of the Department of Children and Youth Affairs, and the recruitment supported through the Irish Primary Principals Network, as well as Cora and Nano. This report on this consultation, Healthy Lifestyles, Have Your Say, was launched with the obesity policy and the implementation of the policy commits to continue to include the voices and contributions of children and young people. I believe that every member of this House acknowledges that individuals and families need to be supported to make informed choices in healthy e eating, being physically active so they can achieve and maintain a healthy weight. The Obesity Policy in Action Plan strives to empower individuals, families and communities to enhance their own skills to improve their health. At the outset, can I say, Carla, the National Obesity Policy prescribes 10 steps forward that would be taken to prevent overweight and obesity. And under each step, there are a number of actions, some of which have been, uh, have been identified for early implementation. I am pleased to report that we have already made progress in a number of areas that are directly relevant and of particular interest to childhood obesity. In addition to establishing the National Obesity Implementation Oversight Group, which I have elaborated on earlier, the Minister for Finance announced in Budget 2018 the introduction of a sugar tax on sugar-sweetened drinks. The policy objective of this levy is to reduce the rates of obesity as well as rates of dental deterioration, particularly in young people. As the House is aware, the sugar sweetened drinks tax commenced on the 1st of May last. It represents a positive step in our national policy to deal with the problem of obesity. The National Oversight Group also gave early approval to the establishment of subgroups on reformulation, reformulation on healthy eating as initial priority for areas of action. This subgroup is technical in its work programme. Work is well underway in this regard on a roadmap for reformulation of foods and drinks to reduce sugar and fat content. The work of this subgroup will primarily uh, uh, set targets on reformulation of food and drink. It also makes recommendations on addressing the reductions of portion sizes and on monitoring and validation procedures. One of the priority actions under Step 3 of the National Obesity Policy and Action Plan was to establish a form of meaningful engagement with the industry on best practice initiatives towards a healthy food environment. And with this in mind, a workshop between the reformulation subgroup and the food sector stakeholders on this took place last September. This workshop provided an opportunity for detailed engagement with key food stakeholders on the challenges and opportunities of reformulation in the interest of promoting health and well-being of the population. Another similar engagement has been scheduled for late February. New healthy eating guidelines and food permanent resources have been published and widely disseminated, including to all primary and post-primary schools. New nutrition standards for schools with an initial focus on school meal programmes funded by the Department of Employment Affairs and Social Protection has also been developed. These nutrition standards were published in September 2017. The nutrition standards were developed by the Department of Health with the assistance of Safe Food and the Health Service Executive in cooperation with members of the School Meals Programme in the Department of Employment Affairs and Social Protection and the Department of Education and Skills. 
Work has commenced on developing healthy eating guidelines for one to five a a old age group, which will be a valuable resource for parents and carers in the future. In addition, a voluntary code of practice for food and beverages promotion, marketing, sponsorship has also been developed involving rep representatives from the food industry, advertising sector, statutory agents and various government departments. Work is now underway to, opera uh, uh, to operate these. Pertinent to this is the Broadcasting Authority of Ireland has now commenced a review of the effectiveness of its current children's commercial communications code. As the House is aware, the Broadcasting Authority of Ireland operates under the jurisdiction of the Department of Communications, Climate Action and Environment. This code was introduced in 2005 and it set down the rule applying to television broadcasters in respect of commercial communications that promote products, services or activities that are deemed to be of particular interest to children or are broadcast during and between children's programmes. Commercial communications include advertising, teleshopping, food placement and sponsorship. This, the codes were updated in 2013 to introduce rules on foods high in fat, salt and sugar. The Broadcasting Authority of Ireland has advised the Department of Health that it is anticipated that a review of the effectiveness of this code will be completed by July 2019. Once the review of effectiveness of the code is completed, the authority will consider what revisions to the code are desirable and undertake a public consultation thereafter. In the HSE, the Healthy Eating Active Living programme is supporting work in the education sector, as well as with parents, with families and communities, and delivering a more coordinated approach to prevention and early intervention in child obesity. This includes a, a five-year communications campaign called START, which has been delivered in collaboration with the HSE and Safe Food, with a focus on supporting parents make healthy choices around food and activity. A first clinical lead for obesity, Professor Donald O'Shea, was appointed in 2017 in order to provide a model of care for children and adults and oversee its implementation. Health assessments, including weight checks, were introduced in the GP's under six contract. The HSE is also implementing a national breastfeeding action plan, which is very important and very relevant to this topic. Under the broader Healthy Ireland agenda, a number of other major initiatives support the obesity policy. The obesity policy acknowledged the key role of physical activity in the prevention of obesity. While the broader benefits of a more active population are set out, are set out in the National Physical Activity Plan. Being active is vital for healthy growth and development and has emotional, social and cognitive benefits for children and young people, as well as benefits for their physical and mental health and well-being. The National Physical Activity Plan is one of the key developments arising from Healthy Ireland. It was approved by the Government and was launched in early 2016. The implementation of the plan is well underway in collaboration with the Department of Transport, Tourism and Sport and a range of other stakeholders, including the Department of Education and Skills. The Healthy Ireland 2018 communications campaign aimed to encourage people to take a small, healthy change under three themes, healthy eating, physical activity and mental well-being. And we are working with a range of national and local partners to deliver a range of communications and citizens' engagement activities. The Healthy Ireland Fund, which was initiated in 2017, has supported a range of actions at both national and local level, many of which are targeted at children and which aim to support the obesity policy and the physical activity plan. Finally, Ms. Minister Byrne is pleased to advise the House that the Government has agreed to establish a Healthy Ireland office in the Department of Health to build on the progress to date and further strengthen cross-government collaboration on the implementation of Healthy Ireland. This development will bolster the collective efforts to implement key policies, including the uh, obesity policy, all aimed at improving the health and well-being of our population. Carla, once again, I want to thank uh, Deputy Alan Farrell and the Oireachtas Committee for their great work on this particular issue. Thank you.